Fairy tales have been around for thousands of years. Every culture, every would have graced this planet has had some sort of oral tradition passed down amongst them. Egyptians had their tales, the Native Americans had their tales, Mayans had their tales, Vikings had their tales. What is it about these stories that have stood the test of time? How have they lasted through to this very day where authors that we hear about and see about in our bookstores are still adding to this growing uh, compendium of literature? It's quite simple. All three tales do three things. They stimulate the intellect, they stimulate the emotions, and they stimulate the imagination of children and young adults alike. These are the three key areas that must be stimulated in order to have proper growth at any age. Now, without this, people become stagnant. All right, there we go. Okay, so what am I talking about? I'm not talking about Harry Potter, I'm not talking about Twilight, I'm not talking about those books of Tolkienian length. Those fall into high fantasy. Those stories can take years, literally years, to finish and get to the epiphany moment. Now, how do they work? G.K. Chesterton once said that when a child of seven is told that Tommy opened a door and saw a dragon, he gets excited. Now, when a child of three is told this same story, well, he's excited over the fact that Tommy opened the door. It's, com it's compounded knowledge and shows that children can learn from the same story, even if they are different ages. There's always something that can be taken out regardless of how old you are. Now, what are the typical casts of characters? This looks like something out of a horror movie. We have dragons, goblins, ghouls, witches, ogres, ghosts, demons, the undead. I wouldn't be willing to take my child to see a, any, a movie with any of these in there. Murderers, vampires, rapists, wolves, jinn, thieves, ancient graveyards, and haunted castles. Have them read stories that include all of these. This is what helps children grow, believe it or not. And finally, cannibalism. Yes, give them stories with cannibals in them. Why? Cannibalism is when you, eat, when you are eating kind, eating kind. Now, children are in school. Uh, from kindergarten up through high school and then into college. They are afraid of getting usurped into a larger group, very similar to cannibalism. Cannibalism is rampant in fairy tales. Hansel and Gretel, the, uh, Little Red Riding Hood, The Big Wolf. These stories provide emotional and physical distance for the children. Things that they are scared of in real life that is going on around them, they can transpose those fears and put them elsewhere they are then able to learn from these stories and see how Jack felled the giant. And he can apply that knowledge to a similar situation right around him. These stories do not enable site-specific knowledge. Site-specific, okay. Uh, where did the dragons go? 20, year, 20 to 30 years ago, we stopped writing these scary stories. What happened to them? They just disappeared. Parents, society, educators alike decided they didn't want to scare the children. They were too fragile. They've been going, turned from these gigantic scary demons into newts, basically. <laughs> Ogres no longer ate children. They made them laugh. Chicken Little wasn't afraid of skies falling. You have princesses who are given the kingdom just by going to finishing school and learning to drink tea with her pinky out. That's not the way that this is supposed to be. These children need these stories. Without the ability to separate and without the ability to put these stories elsewhere, take the scary things they are afraid of, take the information from these stories and learn, we're not gonna grow. Back to the mayhem is what I say. Bring back the blood, bring back the violence, bring back all of the death and mayhem. Without these, Nothing else is going to occur. There are many authors today. Neil Gaiman is one of my favorite authors. He has written a fairy tale called The Graveyard Book. It starts, there was a hand in the dark and it held a knife. In the first chapter, Bod, the main character, his parents and sister are murdered. Now for further information, I have all this information on the slide. It's impossible to read. I have these books out with me. Find me at my table. Thank you so much, guys. Have a wonderful night.